This program is brought to you by the partners and friends of Creflo Dollar Ministries. Coming up next on Changing Your World. We have to spend more time when it comes to change evaluating what is it that we believe. Do we believe in the blood of Jesus? Do we believe that grace uh, has given us the power to change? Do we believe? Because if you don't believe that, it's a sounding board. All we have to do is listen to you and that becomes authentic evidence of what you believe. The 2020 Ministers and Leaders Conference is here. Join Creflo and Taffy Dollar online. A lot of the weight of carrying ministry or what people think or where things are coming from for the ministry for the home is released. That burden is lifted. Make plans now to be with us online October 6th through the 8th. Do not miss this revelation on making adjustments for the new age. Register now and secure your spot today. Everybody have issues. That's why we, we all, this, see, this is the thing. We need a Savior to help us with all our issues. <laughs> now think about it. If, if nobody had issues and we were flawless and perfect, we would need a Savior, and Jesus would completely wasted his time shedding his blood and going through that whole deal. And I am learning how to unashamedly go, and go before God and, 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 and share my issues, whichever one I have that day, to say, Lord, I thank you that you've already finished the work for my issue. Now, I reach out with faith and I receive it. Now, let me examine my heart. See, what we do sometimes, we kind of get up and you have a conversation or a situation. It's all about relationships, right? And out of those relationships, you walk out and you're talking about, I feel some kind of way. <laughs> well, it doesn't necessarily mean that it's something going on with the person you just had an encounter with. A lot of times you'll be shocked that when you're feeling some kind of way, it's some unresolved heart issue. Yeah. It's something that maybe happened to you. And like I said, Sunday, we'll talk about it more. A, a, a lot of brokenness that's unresolved and covered up only allows a false identity to come through that. And you dealing with yourself, that might not be the real yourself. It might be the false identity that showed up as a result of you covering up the brokenness that you've never dealt with since you were eight. And so you, you got an eight-year-old trying to rule, rule and guide your life. you 57 and got an eight-year-old making decisions for you <laughs> because you haven't grown past the trauma of the eight-year-old that says, I've got to produce through this cover an identity that's not mine. Why? Because now I'm dealing with people and I got to act this way because, you know, the society is demanding and I've got to act this way so people can't see that I'm really hurt and I'm really broken and all that other kind of stuff. And, and I, don't, I don't think that's a cool way to live. I don't want, I don't want to live like that. And so uh, I want to make it all right with you by telling you that I do this. I want to examine my heart. I want to look at my heart, and before I ever point a finger at somebody else being the problem in my emotion, I want to point the finger at me. If I'm feeling some kind of way, maybe I need to ask myself, are you insecure? Is that insecurity coming up again? Why are you feeling this way? So don't put the finger here. What are you insecure about? And, I, and it doesn't feel good. It doesn't ever feel good for you to recognize something about you, recognize truth about you. That don't feel good. A lot of men I know don't know, they don't want to hear nobody. They don't want to hear their wife tell them the truth. I don't want to hear the truth. Hey, I know that, but I don't want to hear from you right now. <laughs> your wife said, well, you, you need to hear from somebody. You ain't hearing it from yourself. And I'm telling you, hearing it from yourself is probably the best place to go because all you got to do is have a talk with Jesus, and he'll confirm it. You go to the Lord and say, Lord, I, I, this person ain't did nothing to me. But every time I get around him, I'm feeling some kind of way. Show me what's going on with me. He'll do it. 
I, f I find that's the quickest prayer to be answered ever is when you're going and asking God about revelation about you. Lord, I want, I'm, I'm praying for them. Some ain't right. Some ain't holy. No, no. Finger got to start here. That's freedom. Don't you understand? That's freedom for you to be able to examine your own heart, which means nobody else has to do it. And then you hold your mouth, you hold your peace, and you say, Lord, keep, keep working on me. I, I got this issue. And, and, and it'll be cool when you're sitting there. See, because remember what I said, your mouth, your mouth is speaking what's in your heart. I'll show you scripture in a moment where it says, they say it within themselves. So the mouth wasn't working, but they were still saying within themselves. You know what I'm talking about? When you're saying within yourself. And there are lots of things you, you need to deal with within yourself. Guard your heart. Don't let deception enter into your heart. Don't be so hurt and so broken that you would rather choose to be deceived rather than to allow the light of the truth to shine so you can get better. Who gets better without nobody giving them feedback? Everybody needs some constructive feedback. Or you'll be walking around here in deception. Walking around here, got some silly little something on, and you didn't convince yourself it's awesome because <laughs> won't nobody tell you about yourself. <laughs> Don't come around me because I, I love to speak truth. <laughs> the Bible says speaking truth in love. Yeah, amen. <laughs> amen. Who are you to decide not to obey God and not to speak truth in love? That really, that's, who are you? I, God said to speak truth in love. Well, I don't want to do that. I don't wanna, who are you? He's trying to get you to speak truth in love, maybe just to get their attention so he can speak. But you hold him back. And you can be a part of somebody's great deliverance and great arrival at the call of God in their life if you just do what he told you to do. Amen. <laughs> Now, remember, I'm here, I'm, listen, I'm not up here talking about you, but I'm, I'm talking about us. And I'm telling you, it seems like my relationship with God gets thicker yeah. when I'm willing to go and judge myself and judge my heart because he, he's there talking to me. He won't let me beat myself up like I used to. I used to beat myself up real bad. He won't let me do that no more. He loves me. He catches me. He said, now, now don't, don't go that deep. It's, it's just this simple. Make the adjustment. See, that's the deal I find about Christians. Sometimes you just need to make a little adjustment. But what we do, we go all the way over here. <laughs> God, like, don't go, don't go over there. It, you didn't need that much. Just a small adjustment. And most of the time, the adjustment is with our thinking and what we have in our heart. Keep the word with all diligence. Keep thy heart, excuse me, with all diligence. Guard your heart with all diligence. Um, for out of your heart, there's that issue. That's where that issue came from. Where did this come from? Uh, from your heart. Where did that attitude came from? From, from? from your heart. Man, why, why are you acting like that? It, it's from your heart. Now, I don't even want you to get deep with that, so I want to get a little bit more practical, read on down, because I'm thinking about, all right, so how did it get in the heart in order for it to come out the heart? And how do I get it out of my heart? Well, look at the next verse here. He says, put away from thee a froward mouth, a disobedient mouth, and perverse lips put far from thee. So now he's saying, you know what? You got to change what you're talking because that's also putting some stuff in your heart. It's, it, it's a form of meditation. And if you're going to speak things, speak the Word of God so those things can enter into your heart. But if you can't speak in line with what Jesus has done for you, get a revelation of shut up. <laughs> you know, sometimes we just itch and I just got to say it. No, I know I ain't got to say it. I got to say it. I got to say it. And you said, dang, I said it now. <laughs> well, you not only said it, but you made a deposit. Yeah. See, every issue comes from your heart. Oh, every issue. What a revelation in my life. Every issue comes from your heart. Every time you go around and say, I ain't going to never be able to do that, that comes from your heart. You're like, why don't I have confidence? It, 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 you, you were part of that deposit. 
So you speak the right things, it gets in the heart. Speak the right thing, it gets in the heart. Speak the right thing, it gets in the heart. Speak the right thing, it gets in the heart. You know, eventually you got enough in your heart to believe it, and then one of the times you speak it now, it's not speaking it to get it in the heart, it is speaking out of the heart. Y'all hear what I said? It's speaking out of the heart. Let me do it again. You're speaking in the heart. Speaking is a form of meditating the word. You're speaking into the heart. You're speaking it into the heart. You're speaking into the heart. You speak it, it gets in 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 the heart. Heart is full of it. Now you're speaking it, but this time it's coming out of the heart. Man, I wish somebody would have explained that to me. It's coming out of the heart. Examining yourself at the end of the day, I think is important. You know, I take some time yesterday and I had to really examine myself and said, I responded the wrong way, God. That was in my heart. And Lord, I said some stuff that I need to do a replacement with. I, I don't want that in my heart. So let me meditate in the Word. Let me, let me cancel out what I said. That, if you don't examine yourself, at, it's something about examining yourself at the end of the day. Look at your life. Look at what happened. Look at the deposits you made. You're not going to hell for making mistakes, but your life can be enhanced by ex at least examining what you did throughout the day so that you can get full of the right thing and begin to speak those things that will benefit your life. Does that make sense to everybody? Yeah. So he says, put away from you a forward mouth, perverse lips. He said, put far from thee. Look at verse 25. He says, let your eye look right on. Turn on your neighbor and say, right on. Right on. <laughs> <laughs> so, so now he's talking about what are you looking at? And this is so interesting. I, I never saw it like this before. He says, so what you look at with your eyes is going to also be something you see when your eyelids are closed. What, have you what are you meditating on with your eyes? Let your eyelids look straight before thee. All right, so what, what am I doing all day so that when I do close my eyes, what do I see? And you got to be honest with that. What have you been seeing? You can correct that. It changed what you're looking. You can't look at things all day long and not expect to see it when your eyes close. And then don't let it. Somebody said I had a dream. That thing was deep. That thing in there. But it doesn't have to be like that. I remember my wife was telling, her, telling me about her, her story of fear. And she didn't, she, she, that didn't have to be, you know, a, 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 a script in her life of fear. We got to change and put stuff in to get the stuff that was there. We got to go all the way back to that first thing that you can remember, and we just got to feed the Word and feed the Word and feed the Word and feed the Word. And i never forget, she was preaching a sermon one day, and she walked down to the pulpit, and she said, the scary lady is gone. But we knew what to do. We knew how to attack it. This is serious. This heart, the inside of a person. And look at this, verse 26. Ponder, there, there it is, that's how you handle it. Ponder, that's, what, that's, what, that's the definition of meditating. Ponder, rolling it over again. Ponder the path of thy feet. Let all thy ways be established. 27, turn not to the right hand nor to the left. Remove your foot from evil. 28, my son, attend unto my wisdom. And the Word of God is the wisdom of God. And bow thine ear to my understanding or to clarity. So, look at, look at the change that takes place when you look at this heart-mouth relationship. Look at why you don't have to wait on somebody to come do it for you. You don't have to wait for somebody to change before you change. The Bible says, uh, be changed, how? By the renewing of your mind. You can change, but you got to exchange your way of thinking, your way of your opinions, your ideas for God's way of thinking and, and God's opinions and God's ideas, and you do that by attending to His Word and renewing your mind 
in God's Word. That is the most important thing you can do as a Christian. If anybody asks you, what is there, I, as a Christian, I don't know why we got to get in the Word, and I mean, why is it necessary for us to go to Bible study and keep hearing the Word? I mean, you know, God saved us and we're under grace. I mean, why we got to do all that? Because the most important thing for you to do as a Christian is to renew your mind. Why? So you can prove that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Even finding the will of God for your life is going to be based on your renewing the mind. And I think what happens to some Christians, they start growing, they've been saved for a while, and they don't, see, they don't see the importance of renewing their mind with the Word of God, so they don't get in the Word. I've had two millennials to tell me over the last month, Pastor, I have, I, I'm in the Word, I'm studying the Word, I'm reading this book. Every break I have uh, uh, on my job, I get in the Word. I said, what's the result? He says, stuff is happening. My life is changing. I, I, I've been saved for a while, but I've never seen this kind of stuff happen before. There, there's another guy. There, there are a bunch of folks. You know, well, I was dealing with this situation in my life. All my life, I did everything I could to try to get delivered from it. And just by worshiping God and getting in His Word, he's described like, as if something in me has turned and changed and a desire has grown and I don't even want what I used to want. Come on now. Spending time in that Word, a renewed mind. Yes. The most important thing a human being can do is to get born again. The most important thing a born-again person do is to renew your mind. Why? So you can see Jesus. Every study time, I see Him more. Every prayer time, I see Him more. Every time I understand the Scriptures, I see Him more. And you know what's going to happen? You're being transformed every time you see Him more. And one day you're going to look at Him, and you're going to look just like Him. And that's the goal, until, until we become his image. That's the goal. I, I'm, I want to become his image. I, I'm so glad that I need him. Something is so wrong with a man who, who brags about how long he's been saved, the wonderful things he's done, and yet he doesn't need, need Jesus. That's just a lie. I need him. So ain't no, ain't no need me coming out with no robe on and no white collar like I'm crystal clean. I'm cleaner than what I used to be. But I just don't never not want to need him. I mean, life, what, what kind of relationship? I don't, I don't, I want to need him. I think I spoke on Sunday and told you, I, I began praying this very interesting prayer. Lord, show me how to live. You can start looking at been there, did that, did that, did that over again, that was great, that was exciting, did that, and all of a sudden you're an empty nester, and you did this, and you did that, and, and you got to be careful now because you're, you're, you're thinking, oh my God, I did all that and did all of that, and I'm not 70 yet, and I'm not 80 yet, and you start thinking, oh my God, what am I going to do with the rest of it? You start panicking, you start doing kind of stupid stuff and thinking stupid. I didn't want to do that. I don't want to get into this place and say, well, I guess I go fishing twice a week. <laughs> you realize the biggest mistake David made was to come off the battlefield, resign off the battlefield. He was supposed to be on the battlefield, and you know where he was? He was on the balcony, turned into a peeping Tom. Then he got hooked up with some lady he wasn't supposed to be hooked up with. Then he had a husband's kill, and then he had his first kid, and he lost his kid, and then he tried to lie to the prophet. The prophet showed up and said, you the man! And then David fell on his face like, no, with a broken heart and contrite spirit, I need you, God. I need you. And God used him. God used him. I'm so cool and so fine not being the best in people's eyes. I'm so cool. I'm so good with that. Because my focus, as I renew my mind, I'm being focused in on what really matters, the clarity of knowing Jesus. Yes. Yes. Rejoice because you have a free pastor. That's not often. There are lots of pastors that are not free.
Yeah, lots of pastors that are still working on their image, worrying about what folks saying, all that other kind of stuff, and they can't even hear God because they're so concerned about their in people bondage. And you can't deliver people from their bondage until you get delivered from people bondage. So who you gonna help while you in bondage? Of people. I tell you what, that social media thing, boy, I tell you, don't let the devil use it. It can be used for good, but it can be used to really mess with you if you let it. You put on your nice little shirt and you want to take a picture of yourself and post it. <laughs> now, son, you get these little feedback. That's the ugliest thing I've seen for my life. Girl, where you get that from? The trash can? Now you all mad. <laughs> Cussing folks out. Your mama got an ugly blouse on. I, who asked you? I ain't asked you about my blouse in the first place. <laughs> and then you forgot who following you. I'm following you, and now you done cussed them out. You blanket it, blank, 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 and then it pop on my page. Ooh, sister having a day, ain't she? <laughs> Are y'all following me in, in what I'm trying to show you here tonight? It, it's, uh, uh, let, let's look at this scripture. Uh, uh, Psalms 14 and 1. Ah, uh, yeah. Psalms 14 and 1. <clears throat> he says, the fool has said in his heart. Now, this is important. Even though it's talking about the fool, notice he is still speaking from his heart. So what he says, this fool, fool says that there is no God. He might not, you might not hear him say it with his mouth, but in his heart he's saying it. He says there is no God, and then he talks about him. They, 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 they are corrupt. They have done abominable works. There is none that doeth good. All this is in their heart. So what's religion? It's when you can open your mouth and say something that's not in your heart. You know, oh, I believe in God, but in your heart you're saying something different. And by the way, God weighs the hearts of men. That's where he operates. He, he weighs the hearts of men. So what I'm saying is, stop lying to yourself. God already knows the truth. So the best thing you can do is be naked honest with God. Because like it ain't like you fooling him like, fooling him like you're fooling everybody else. Well, I got a secret and you'll never know. God knew the secret before it came a secret. Amen? Amen? Now, so words change the world. Words change the weather. Words will change your circumstances. Words will change your life. But they have to be spoken from a right place. As long as you're looking for someone to do something for you, you will minimize the power and the effectiveness of your own words. I'm not, I'm not going to do that. I'm not, gonna, I'm not waiting for somebody to do something for me in order for me to make the necessary changes. God is only requiring for you to be responsible for you. Amen. I don't need to be responsible for you. Oh, you the pastor, you ought to. No, God told me to feed you with simplicity, with the Word of God. Feed my sheep with the Word. My job is to love you and to feed you. But I can't change you unless you want to be changed. Amen. I can't do it. And when that time for, for you to change, you got to know God. He's the one that's going to change you from the inside out. I can take you to the prayer room and lead you in a couple of uh, confessions, but I've seen over the years, that didn't take. <laughs> I took people up in the prayer room, seemed like they got worse. Because <laughs> most of the people did it cause, like I did it. I, 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 my first confession to make Jesus the Lord of my life was because I was scared I was going to go to hell because I just finished watching the movie The Burning Hell. I wasn't going because I wanted to know Jesus. I just didn't want to know Satan. <laughs> and then I realized that the relationship was more than a staying out of hell. It was about a real person who wanted to live life with me. And then I found out that I can be in him and he can be in me. And and he wants to be there, and he wants to talk to you, and he wants to share with you, and he wants to share those deep, most intimate questions. And, 
And that's where the relationship starts, when you come out with an answer and you know you, it didn't come from your brain. You're just not that smart. God would say something to me, and I'm like, I know that's God because I, I, I don't know how to use them words like that. He'll say something so profound, and I'm like, oh, well, that. And I'm thinking, ooh, like I'm Shakespeare or something like that. Where'd that come from? That's what he wants. That's what he wants more than anything. He wants you. Are you tired of going through the motions and never seeing results in your life? It's time to embrace the positive change God wants for you. The seven message series, Changed by Grace, is designed to help you finally see lasting results. For a love gift of $40 or more, you can receive the entire series. The most important thing a born again person do is to renew your mind. Why? So you can see Jesus. Every study time, I see him more. Every prayer time, I see him more. You're being transformed every time you see him more. And one day you're going to look at him and you're going to look just like him. Jesus provided everything I need. He died on the cross, so I, I would have everything that I need today. And I don't have to do anything but just believe. Or for just $55, you can also receive a four-message series, New Depths in the Holy Spirit. In this series, you'll learn how to cultivate a deeper relationship with the Holy Spirit. Call today or visit the website below to order. The 2020 Ministers and Leaders Conference is here. Join Creflo and Taffy Dollar online with Making Adjustments for the New Age. Grace is a person. His name is Jesus, and that is the foundation that you build on. It's the foundation for your teaching on parenting. It's the foundation for your teaching on finances. It's the foundation for your teaching on spiritual gifts. It's the foundation. You can't leave this foundation and then just go teach a series. A lot of the weight or carrying ministry or what people think or where things are coming from for the ministry for the home is released. That burden is lifted. See, we keep trying to go to church growth conferences when we need to find a church health conference because a healthy church will grow by itself. Make plans now to be with us online October 6th through the 8th. Do not miss this revelation on making adjustments for the new age. Register now and secure your spot today. I pray that this broadcast blessed you today. I want you to pray about sowing a financial seed into this ministry. I also want to extend a special thanks to those of you who have remained our loyal partners, supporters, and friends. Your financial support goes a long, long way. Your donations help equip us with what we need to send this broadcasts all over the world, and when you give to this ministry, you partner with us to reach people everywhere who are hurting and in need of the revelation of God's grace and love. If God has placed it on your heart to support the vision of this ministry to reach the world with the gospel of grace, you may call in to make your financial donations or log on to CreflodollarMinistries.org. God bless you. There is a purpose for your life. Introducing Grace Life Academy, an innovative approach to learning God's Word. Grace Life Academy offers unlimited access with hundreds of hours of online teachings. You'll have access to comprehensive video Bible lessons that include features such as e-courses, study guides, an online community, quizzes, and more. Text GLA to 51555 or go online to MyGraceLifeAcademy.com. Thank you, partners and friends. Your love and financial support makes it possible to bring this message into millions of homes all across the globe.